Let us pray. Father Lord, we give you praise and Father Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Father God, that the fact that you are in this place and you are in every other place around the globe, that, works, that is what makes you our God and beyond. You are God who's omniscient. You're omnipresent. Omnipotent. And so, Lord, here we are coming to receive your spiritual word because you have called us to return to you. And, Lord, we ask for those who are watching right now and those who will be watching later on that you minister to us. Feed us, Lord. Let it be that the food that we get in this place today, O oh Father God, will nourish us, transform us, so that you can preserve us for that kingdom agenda that you've called us into. Lord, we pray because we recognize that in this season, like in every other season, we cannot do it by ourselves. We acknowledge our dependence on you. And so through the ministry of the word, begin to minister to us. Challenge where you need to challenge. Reassure somebody today, Lord, so that you can gain that which you desire. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Well, as I said, we're continuing our series, Transformed and Preserved. Somebody shout, I am transformed and I am preserved. Say, I am transformed and I am preserved. I am transformed by the Spirit of God. I am, being pre I am pre preserved for God's agenda in Jesus' name. And I declare you will live out the God agenda that is upon your life. And today's series is part two of what we started last week, which is the Lord of the call. The Lord of the call. Even I like the way Pastor David prayed into it, the God of the call. Yes, the Lord of the call, the Lord of us is the one who is calling us. Our foundation scriptures are taken from Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3, and 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Very important in this season, and I want to encourage you to memorize it, meditate on them, and pray them into your being. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3 says, Therefore, say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is faithful. Not man, God is faithful. By whom you were called. And somebody, you need to know that you are called. You were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And to that two fragments, I just want to read a portion of the book of Zechariah that really is going to form um, a backdrop to the enjoyment that we believe and I believe is going to be your portion today. And so when you come to Zechariah chapter 2, it starts off and says, Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, Where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is its length. And there was an angel who spoke with me, coming out, and another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I say, for I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her and will be the glory in her midst. Verse 6, up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. For I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion. Escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will, make my, I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spores for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. 
For behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall, join, shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people. And I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Verse 12. And the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. And I declare that the message of the, the reading of the word becomes a blessing and an enjoyment in your own life in Jesus' name. If you believe that, type an amen, shout an amen in Jesus' name. Introduction. Last week, we were talking about the Lord of the call. And we recognize that the Lord of the call is the one who is calling us to return to him. And in our, in our returning to him, he returns to us. During the course of the last week, I received a message. And someone was asking, where is God in the midst of COVID-19? And as I began to ruminate on that question, immediately somehow I began to ask myself and say, where am I? In fact, most important, I'm asking, where is the church in the midst of COVID-19? For me, I have resolved in my, myself that I am the one who has returned to the Lord because the Lord has said, return to me and he will return to, return to me and he will return to me. And so I hope that the church is in a place where they have returned to God so that God can return to them. The Lord of hosts is the one that we return to. To return to him is to know that he is the solution for every season, including this season. No wonder in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, but to those, that, and that's a lot of part, but those, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. In some, some versions talk about the fact that those people who know their God shall be strong and they will resist. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so in this season, my prayer is that each and every one of us, we will turn to the Lord and the Lord turning to us will strengthen us, amen, and enable us to be able to do great exploits in this season in spite of what is going on in our world today. To return to the Lord is to know him, as I said. To return to the Lord is to be called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, according to 1 Corinthians 1, 9. To truly comply with Zechariah 1, 3, which is to turn to the Lord, and 1 Corinthians 1, 9, to which is to be called into fellowship, means that we understand that our turning to the Lord is based on our call into fellowship with the one who is the son of God. And whenever there is a meeting point of our returning to the Lord and responding to the call into fellowship, Christ becomes the significant one in our lives. No wonder in, first, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, it will say, He is before all things, and in him all things consist. I need you to know, your present is consistent in Christ. Your future is in Christ. And so why not turn to the one who is the Lord of hosts, who is above all things. In our turning to him, I need you to know, he makes us significant for the God's kingdom agenda that is ahead of us. And so it's not about just us, it's about there's a kingdom agenda ahead of us. All we are required to do is to enter into the enjoyment of returning to the Lord and he's returning to us. And so how can we do that? I want to give you a bit of a how. I want to give you one or two handles today to make this practical and so that you can go out there and allow that to become a living enjoyment in your life. Simply by breathe. Breathe the word of God because the word of God is life and it is spirit. So wherever you are, you can breathe. And that breathe, as you know, and we've done in the past, is an acronym for a number of things that you should consider. So whenever you take the word of God in this season and listen less to CNN, 
Take the word of God in this season and listen less to BBC. Take the word of God in this season and depend less on what you get on your WhatsApp. You find that you are able to breathe. you breathing in the word of God. The B part of that breathe is to believe. Whenever you come to the word of God, believe whatever God says he will do and what he can do. Believe what he says concerning you, praise the Lord. In that chapter, in Zechariah chapter 2, the Bible says, God says, listen, I am the one who has come out with a measuring line. And whatever, and whenever you see a man with a measuring line, he's come to take possession. Somebody shout, I am God's property. I am God's property. And so if you understand that you are God's property, that becomes that the substantiating aspect of your faith. That irrespective of what is going on in this world, what irrespective of what's going on out there, your is that you believe the word of God. When he says, hush, that I am about to be aroused now, then you know that, listen, I believe the word of God that says this too will pass too in the name of Jesus. The hour there is rejoice. In Psalms 119, verse 6, 162, it says, I rejoice at your word as one who finds good treasure. I need you to know whenever you pick up the word of God to read it, you, you are reading in God's treasure. You're beginning to discover great treasure. And as you would find great treasure physically and rejoice, I need you to rejoice at the reading of the word. The next one is E, which is to eat in this season. In our turning to the Lord, can we become ones who consume the word, not consume negative words or negative uh, information coming through um, um, online medias and things like that. But we are eating the word. No wonder Jeremiah 15, 16 will say, your word I found and I ate. And your word was, in, was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Praise the Lord. And I pray that in this season, as we spend less time in doing other things that are not going to build us up, we will spend more time eating the word and we will find rejoicing in our spirit. Amen. The next thing is to allow the word to approve you. In Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved of God a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In this season, it's not good enough for us to just look for the 10 scriptures that talks about healing, but really read the whole contents of the word of God. Let us read the whole Bible as much as possible and take in the word of God and rightly divide the word of God as you're eating it and let that become what approves you. You know what that means? When the day of testing, you're able to stand because your dependence is on the word of God, not on what man is saying. Number two, the next one is T which is to teach. It is important that in this season, you yourself, you, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 that because of the work of the blood of Christ, he has made us kings and queen, uh, kings and priests unto our God. You yourself, you're a priest. And I need you to be able to use your WhatsApp, your phone, your emails to be a pastor to a group of people. Maybe the people on your WhatsApp group of friends. Maybe a WhatsApp group of family members. Maybe colleagues. Maybe your locality, you have a forum that you use. You become the pastor that ministers the words of life and truth into that community to the glory of God. The next thing about that breeze is to heed. Proverbs chapter 16 says, He who heeds the word, wise, word wisely will find good and forever trust in the Lord. And whoever trusts in the Lord is happy is he. In this season, let the word question you. Don't just be looking for words that just entice you, but let the word question you. And then you begin to seek the Lord for the answers for the things that you're reading. And the last thing in there is the E, which is to entreat. Use the word of God to pray back to God. In uh, Psalm 119, verse 58, it says, I entreat or I pray for your favor with, with, with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. Use the word and pray the word back to God. God. Praise the Lord. And it's important in this season that we are returning to the Lord so that the Lord returns to us. It is important that we understand we must come to him in his word as one of those things. Read the word, meditate on the word, pray the word, stand on the word. Let the word be that which ministers to you to the glory of God. No wonder 
in Amos chapter 5, verses 4, it says, Thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live. In this season, every one of us, we are called to seek God and live. Not that if you don't seek God, you will die. Listen, it's not even about the fact that you might catch anything or not, but the fact that whenever you're not in the midst and the enjoyment of God, according to Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about the fact that we were dead when working. But now we have been saved by grace. And now that you are saved by grace, continually stand in that place of grace as you begin to seek him and you begin to enjoy him. The Lord of hosts, who is the Lord who is calling us to seek him? He is the Lord of, who is the, he is the Lord called the Jehovah Shabbat. Jehovah Shabbat means the Lord of power, the Lord of armies. You know what that means? The one who is calling you to seek him he has got all the powers of this earth in his hand. And he wants you to enter into the enjoyment of those powers. He wants you to enter into the enjoyment of his army who are set to and given charge to look over you. Let's look at a few references concerning this Jehovah, the Lord of, um, uh, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Shabbat. In Isaiah 14 verse 27, he says, The Lord of hosts has proposed... And he will, and who will acknowledge? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? The Bible says when God has proposed something, nobody cancels it. I need you to know the word of God concerning your life cannot be canceled to the glory of God. Let us look at Psalm 33 verse 9. He said, he spoke and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. In your turning to the Lord, you will come again, you will come into the realization of promises that God has spoken to concerning you and nobody can change it because it is commanded and it has to be done to the glory of God. Let me give you one more. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11, he says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Why would you not want to turn to such a God? Why would you not want to turn to such a Lord who has the power, the greatness, the glory, the victory, and the majesty? He says, going on, for all that is in heaven and all that is on earth is yours. The kingdom is yours, O Lord, and you are exalted above all to the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so what am I trying to get at? In this season, the Lord of hosts is calling us to return to him. And in our returning to him, we are entering into the call into fellowship with him. Because God is faithful. How, what is that all about? How, does, how will God dispense all his riches, all his blessings to us, except we return to his son, hallelujah, and his son, we are in enjoyment, in fellowship, companion with his son for us to be able to enjoy that which are his blessings. And so to be called into fellowship is to be called into partnership with the Lord of hosts to be called into participation that of that which belongs to the Lord of hosts, to be called into benefaction of that which you find in the Lord of hosts, to, find, to be called into communion with the Lord of hosts, to be called into communication. And hence, really, whenever you need, in this season, some of you are asking, so what is going to happen next? No, 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 you're asking the wrong question. Lord Jesus, what should I be thinking for? What are you saying to me concerning my next mood? Because in your call into fellowship, there is a communication, there's a distribution, and there is a contribution to the glory of God. There is, a, there is something that God wants to achieve at the end of all of this. Guess what? You are the means. You are the vessel of mercy that God has got his eyes upon. Praise the Lord. No wonder in Isaiah chapter 55, it starts off by saying, why would you be looking to those of you who have first come to him for waters? Why are you spending money on what cannot buy bread? And why are you laboring? And in verse 3 of that Isaiah 55, he says, incline your ears and come to me. That is the Lord of hosts saying, talking to somebody here. Here, and your soul shall live. Your soul shall live means that your soul shall enter into the enjoyment of grace that is found in Christ. Your soul will enter into the enjoyment of the blessings of life, light, security, and all other blessings, including the joy and the peace that is found in God. 
And he says, listen, incline here and your, your soul shall live. And I will make an, I said, I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Now look at what happens next. The sure mercies of David. If you notice, it's a capital T, which means that that phrase there is personalized. It's almost taking a, 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 a composition of a person. He says, I will show you, I will keep an everlasting covenant with you. And that covenant is the sure mercies of David. That is actually Christ in his resurrection. Remember, when you come to Acts chapter 13, the Bible and Paul will talk about this sure message of David when he talks about the fact that David and Jesus died and resurrected. However, David died and went to sleep with the, with, the, with, the, with the elders, but Christ in his death rose up never to see corruption again, and hence he fulfills the, mercy, the, the, the blessings and the covenant that God had given David. And hence, listen, Christ died for us. He rose up so that we can be justified. Why would you not want to turn to this one in the word, in the time of prayer, so that you can enter into the enjoyment of the sure mercies of David? Listen to verse 4. Indeed, I have given him as a, number one, a witness, number two, a leader, and number three, a commander. In this season, everybody needs a witness. You need a witness that says, this is the word of God. No wonder in that Zechariah chapter two, we see that the Bible talks about the fact that the man with the measuring line tells the, tells the, the angel that was coming out to you that, listen, I am going to measure Jerusalem as an evidence to show that I am taking possession of Jerusalem. But not only that, you need a leader. A leader is one who leads a movement. A leader is the one who is a spiritual guide or a, uh, uh, or, or a directing one. And no wonder you see that according to that same portion in Zechariah chapter 2, he says, For the Lord says, I will be a wall of fire around her and the glory in her midst. He says, listen, as the leader, I will cover them. As a leader, I will be the one to walk in them so that the glory of God can be seen in this season. Somebody shout, I have a witness, number one, and number two, I have a leader. But he doesn't stop there. He said, this one, who is the sure message of David, will become a commander. Listen to what it says in verse 8 of Zechariah chapter 2. For thus says the Lord of hosts, who he sent me after glory to the nations which plundered you. For he who touches, touches, who touches you touches the apple of my eye. Ha, the commander who is the head of an army says, listen, anybody who touches you in this season, whatever wants to come against you in this season, they will not be able to because to touch you is to touch the apple of God's eye. I need you to know, as you turn to the Lord in this season, in the word, in prayer, in spending time meditating and focusing, and putting your faith in the one called Lord Jesus, guess what? You enter into the enjoyment of the sure mercies of David. Somebody say, I am an enjoyer of the sure mercies of David. Somebody say, I have a witness. I have a leader and I have a commander. Praise the Lord. And so very quickly, as I begin to round up, I want to show you four things that you must take serious in this season. It is possible that you could make this all about you. Don't make it about you. Make it about what God wants to achieve in you and through you with the other saints. Remember, he says, God says in the tail end of that Zechariah chapter 2, he says, I am coming and I will dwell with you in your midst. In fact, in my dwelling with your midst, People of other nations will join themselves to you and they will become my people. In this season, even though we have this coronavirus and the lockdown in various parts of the world, God has an agenda that he, can, that he wants to play out as a result of this. God didn't cause it, but all of this, as we know, according to what Joseph will say in Genesis, that what the, what the enemy made for evil or what his brothers, God has turned it for his good. God will turn this for his good, for the church's sake to the glory of God. And so what am I saying? The church, when you come to Romans chapter 15, verse 5, it talks about entering into the fellowship of God to enjoy grace. Romans chapter 15, verse 5. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you like-minded, grant you to be like-minded towards one another 
according to Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. In this season, every one of us in the body of Christ must enter into the enjoyment of God of peace and comfort. In this season, as you begin to read the scriptures, the God in the scriptures that you're reading, who is his son, through whom he's talking to you, becomes the God of patience and comfort that ministers to you and allows you and I and other brethren in the body to be like-minded, regulated by the Spirit of Jesus. And as, that, as a result of that, the church will grow. In this season, this is not a time for us to be bickering and be fighting among ourselves as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Even family members, this is a time for us to be able to allow the God of patience. In some versions, it talks about the God of endurance and encouragement. As you turn to the word, use the words that you're getting from the word for yourself. Now send it to somebody to encourage them and enable them to pray into being, to be encouraged and to receive patience in the name of Jesus. So we have the God of peace and the God of comfort. When you come to Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, now may the God of hope and so we've got the God of peace. No, no, we've got the God of patience and the God of um, uh, encouragement. Now we're talking about the God of hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the enjoyment here? The enjoyment is that if you read the, 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 the scriptures before it, it talks about the fact that the Gentiles have been drawn by the root of Jesse, which is Christ Jesus. Meaning that the Jews are from the stock of David, no doubt. But in this, in this, in this revelation, according to Isaiah, he says the Gentiles too will find, they find their hope in that same Jesus. It is that hope that brought us into the kingdom. Now let the God of that same hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing. This is not the season to doubt. This is the season to receive the joy and the peace of believing so that you may abound in the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as a church, as a body, this is a time where we embrace, yes, the God of endurance and enjoyment and encouragement, but also let us embrace and enter into the enjoyment of the God of hope so that that hope will fill us with joy. Give us peace as we continually believe and so we may abound into further hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And number four, we talk about, in, we see in Romans chapter 15, verse 33, and in Romans chapter 16, verse 20, the God of peace. Somebody say, I enjoy the God of endurance, the God of encouragement, the God of hope, now the God of peace. In 15, verse 33 says, now the God of peace be with you. All, amen. That's it. Jesus said, I, my peace I give, not as the world gives, where you have to sell your soul, but as you believe in him, he gives you peace. And he says in that, in 1620, now, and the God of peace will cross Satan under his feet, under your feet. In this season, that which the enemy wants to use to bring scattering in the world, God says, I am the God of peace. And I'm going to bring Satan under your feet to crush him. And we see that in the book of Zechariah chapter 2. Because in the book of Zechariah chapter 2, there's a portion where he talks about the fact that I have spread you abroad. Around that verse 8 thereabouts. He says, I have spread you abroad. And so in the world, we are seeing what's happening and we're saying it's a scattering. No, God said for me, I see it as a spreading. Wherever you have been spread, come on, be the, hand, be, be the vessel of God or vessel of glory of God in that location. 
Praise the Lord. Win souls for God in that location. Amen. Yes, you might not be able to go to your regular church services, but in that place where you are, God is there. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. And he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. And so what should be our response? As I close, Hosea chapter 12 verse 6 says, So you, by the help of your God, return. Hosea says, by the help of God, return. Observe mercy and justice and wait on your God continually. We must be ones who return and we re wait on God. That's why we need to enter into the enjoyment of the God of patience who will be also the God of encouragement in that time and who is the God of hope in that very place and the God of peace in that very place. Return somebody and wait on your God continually. I like the way the Message Bible puts it. In Hosea 12, verse 6. What are you waiting for? Return to God. Commit yourself in love, in justice. Wait for God and don't give up on him ever. And so in order not to give up on God in this season ever, think return. Remember we thought, we talked about breathe, which stands for an acronym, as an acronym, now the acronym return. We did this last week. I want you to return to the one who can rescue you and he will rescue you. That's the R. Return to the one who will escort you in your day-to-day -day going in and going out. Coming in and going out. I want you to return to the one who takes you under his wings. I want you to return to the one who said, I will unburden you because you can cast your burdens upon him. I want you to return to the one who restores faith, strength, belief, faith, and power into that soul of yours. Maybe there's someone here you know, someone who's in hospital. As you return to the Lord in prayer, God restores them, revives them, and they recover. And the last one of that acronym return is N, which is God negates. In Zechariah chapter 1, we read about the four horns. But in the midst of the four horns, God raises up the four craftsmen. And they're there to terrify and cast away the effects and even the ones who represent the four horns. And so today, I want you to come to a place where your focus is on the Lord of the call. And the Lord of the call is the one who says, return to me and I will return to you because there's so much blessings in the form of the mercies of David that I want to give to you. And for you to enjoy it, you must know that you have been called into fellowship by God into his son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. My prayer is that in this season, your heart will not fail. You enter into the enjoyment of God, the God of endurance, the God of encouragement, the God of hope, and the God of peace. In Jesus' name, let us pray.